Hi everyone, this is a fairly small Micmake Mail segment. Uh, whatever Micmake Mail I'm up to, but we've got a couple of things. So we've got uh, two things, and also I thought I'd take a look at an old Micmac Mail uh, delivery. Uh, this one is the Hi5 One. I'll just give it a quick review because it's just been sitting on my shelf for a long time and I really wanted to get into it. So anyway, uh, we've got three items. First item, I think we'll take a look at this one. Uh, so this one I think came from one of my subscribers and uh, he ordered a whole bunch of these Nano Pies, uh, but these are the Nano Pie Duos, and these are a great little board. What the friendly arm guys have done is they've taken the basically a, a Neo and shrunk it down into a, a dip size package, uh, and it contains an SD card, I think it's 512 megs of RAM, I think, from memory, uh, an H2, uh, and this actually slots into a motherboard and you, it breaks out HDMI and, and everything else. So it's quite a nice little neat package. Oh, you also get a little heatsink. So it fits uh, fairly neatly onto a standard breadboard. I guess the only complaint I probably have with it is that you're only left with one row of pins that you can make use of on a breadboard. But really that's not too much of a drama. I think you can get uh, breadboards that have a, a wider spacing. After tightening up that little heatsink, you can see the PCB bending fairly considerably. It's a fairly thin board. It's not a. It's a massively thick board. You know that's probably one thing that uh, concerns me at, at the moment. So anyway, so let's try this out. So I just flashed the official friendly arm image onto this, and so it's just a simple matter of chucking it in and you wire up a TTL to USB serial port and then just plug it straight in. So I've wired up a simple LED I've connected to the uh, console so let's uh, boot it up and see what happens. Booting up is fairly quick uh, I've connected up an LED and also a serial port uh, for the console uh, connected to the, the RS-232 converter and yeah, it just seems to be fairly quick. We seem to have RTC, SPI uh, all the usual stuff there. Um, so let's just see if I can just toggle this LED. So I had to switch it over uh, to another GPIO because that one was actually being used as an alternate GPIO. So you can see that I've connected up to GPIO 11 uh, and I'm just about to flash the LED. Look at that, just like I bought one. Well, I'm going to uh, give this a bit of a run through uh, and I'll publish a review at uh, some stage in the future. So thanks uh, very much to Leon uh, for sending me those two boards. Greatly appreciate it. From what I can see, they're a fairly decent board. Um, I do have a concern about that PCB bending. I think they really need to increase the, the PCB width. But anyway, um, stay tuned for that review coming up. So next up, fairly sure this one came from uh, Ambient Labs and they saw that I did a review on one of their boards earlier on and they sent me a more recent version of that board. So this is a fairly small module um, from Ambient Lab. So this is called the Meta Motion R and it contains a uh, 9 DOF IMU, temperature, pressure and light sensor. It's a fairly tiny little neat package um, and it's also a logger so I'm not sure how much flash is on it. Let me just check. 8 megabytes of flash on board. They've also got a fairly decent app uh, that you can load up on Android or iPhone. Uh, so let's crack that out and see what it looks like. So I guess the first thing to do is connect up some juice. Then head on over to my phone and see what happens. This is the uh, MetaBase application. This uh, MetaMotion will tend to just sit there with no LEDs. The whole idea is to, to be able to last for as long as possible on batteries. So uh, it's fairly straightforward. It sees it straight away. And I'll give it just a, a suitable name. 
So, uh, looks, looks pretty good. You can adjust up to 800 hertz. That's pretty good. It's supposed to also provide fusion of uh, gyroscope, magnometer, and accelerometer, which is, is good. Um, and give you a quarter on, it can give you a 100 hertz quarter, quarter non uh, output, which is pretty decent. 100 hertz is pretty good. And so I can set, say, temperature, I want pressure, magnometer, start logging that. Okay, total transmission, so I might have to just set that and start. So I was streaming data. So I should be able to twill it around. And I can download it and I can share it. This looks pretty good. So Ambient Lab have a subscription service where you can send data to the cloud. And, oh, okay doesn't seem to work on my particular account okay um, but you can also send it uh, as an email so as a quick review but I can see that it's a fairly decent uh, board and it's really tiny it's got a hundred milliamp hour battery so I'm not sure how long that lasts for you can get a hundred Hertz fusion data which is pretty decent it seems to be pretty good but I'll have to do a, a proper review on it and uh, see how it performs anyway that's that so next so the last one is the High Five One, uh, which was a crowd supply campaign that was successfully funded at the end of last year. Um, and this is a pretty beefy little board. So the uh, High Five One uh, runs the SI5 E31 uh, Corplex, which is a 32-bit RISC-5 uh, uh, MCU. Um, this is a this is a bit of a speed demon. This board, because it goes up to 320 uh, megahertz. Uh, clock rate with an internal PLL uh, clock. So uh, let's fire this one up and see what it looks like. So I've connected up uh, an LCD screen to this uh, SI5. This is the uh, 9 th ILI 9341 based screen. And I've also connected up the console and I should be seeing some sort of response. And there we go. Are the LEDs changing? Yep, yeah, looks like they're changing. So let's uh, fire up the IDE and see if we can actually get this screen working. The SI5 is supported under the Arduino IDE. Uh, you add support for it in the normal way by adding in the URL. Then you can install it from the Boards Manager. Then select the High Five One. then the first serial port and it has two serial ports so let's load up the basic LED blink sketch and see how that goes and the LED blinking program seems to work well so let's try and get this ILI 9341 up and running so look at that the uh, ILI 9341 graphics library was updated to support the uh, SI5 and it works pretty well. However, it looks a little bit slow. Um, I might just play around with that and see if I can uh, speed it up. That's looking pretty slow. In fact, a lot slower than um, some of the other boards, Arduino boards. Running off a 256 meg clock seems to uh, make it a lot faster. Uh, so I was running on the default 16 meg clock. Let's see if I can uh, speed that up even more. So, yep, definitely the uh, 320 meg clock is a lot faster than the, uh, the default 16 meg. It'd be nice to have uh, time to do a proper review on this one. Um, but the SI5 looks like a pretty decent little board. So there you have it. Now I was just about to uh, hit publish on this video uh, when this arrived in my post box. So uh, let's crack this one open. Uh, I have no idea what this is. I think it's sent either one of my supporters. I'm not sure. Um, but let's crack it open first and then ask questions later. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. Wonder what this is. I know exactly what this is. 
So in the last weekly roundup, I can't remember what number it is, um, I mentioned a bunch of uh, winning entries in the Hacker Day competition. One of the competition winners contacted me uh, because he saw his uh, dementia-friendly music player. Now, the whole, this is absolutely fabulous idea. I love this sort of thing. Um, the whole idea of this is that you have a very simple interface uh, for people with dementia. The whole premise is that people who have dementia respond extremely well to uh, music and especially the music that they used to listen to when they were younger. So the whole idea is to make this simple. You've got volume, you've got songs, you've got a jack, and you've got a power and it's pretty simple um, and it's made out of a, a laser cut um, and box. I think from memory you can either buy the full kit with the Raspberry Pi SD card and everything else and the box or it's, you can just buy the box and add all the bits you want. He's opened up all the software, he's open source so it's all very straightforward. So this is great, I think he may have sent me the kit but let's have a look. So it's Ross Porter who sent me the this package. Um, so his dad had dementia um, he loved all the, the music from the 1940s. As his dementia progressed, he found even more joy in the music. So this is, I absolutely love this sort of stuff. Stuff that has a very tangible, um, immediate benefit. Um, you can make anything, but stuff like this that uh, has a complete, tangible benefit straight up is absolutely fantastic. So let's crack it open and, and give it a whirl. If you're a regular viewer, you may have noticed my complaints about um, power supplies and so forth. Uh, so, so Ross has given me a, a universal supply, which has the Australian plugs. Look at that. That's fantastic. You've seen all these ones before. You just clip it out and clip it in. So that's great. Good on you, Ross. Thanks very much for that. Um, now, he didn't need to send me all this stuff, but he sent me the whole, whole kit. Um, some really nice headphones too. Sennheiser HD 202s. Nice. Uh, wood glue. That's actually fairly good wood glue too as well. Um, that's, I use that often uh, in my carpentry. Um, he sent me a Raspberry Pi, um, which is the, you know, the regular Raspberry Pi. The jumper wires and everything else, the turning knob, the laser cut um, parts to it. Let's uh, build this then. So this is pretty much the whole kit. Um, if you want to buy the complete kit from, from Ross. Essentially got an SD card. Uh, in the Raspberry Pi, which is the OS and the software that he's written. I think it's, I believe it's a Python software. And that's the SD card. Um, and all you do is you come along and you attach your USB thumb drive with all the music on that. And you essentially got volume and uh, another knob to control uh, which song is being played. Really simple and it really needs to be simple for people with dementia. So he's provided a, a rotary uh, encoder. Nice, and I think there's probably two of those. Yep, so there's two. A uh, th feed through jack, uh, an extension cable. Oh, here we go, he's, he's given me a, um, uh, a USB thumb drive uh, with the music on it. Okay, so he's given some very detailed instructions. It's unusual you find someone uh, providing some fairly detailed instructions. Uh, where you can get parts uh, from US, UK, uh, headphones, which headphones are good, tools you might need, uh, how to prepare the SD card, basic construction. That's good. This is great. This is having documentation like this is actually very unusual in a, in a uh, maker project because people just assume that you're going to have. Uh, uh, some sort of knowledge to, uh, to begin with. So this is one of these projects that really anyone can make. Um, you don't need any soldering ability, you don't need any um, Linux ability. But this is fabulous. Love this sort of stuff. Now the reason why I put uh, this sticky adhesive stuff on, I think, I've never actually used a laser cutter before, but I think the reason why you do it is to stop the burn marks or the scorch marks of the laser cutter. You can see the um, it burns. You, if you want to be doing laser cutting of wood, then you really need to have the, the timber with this sticky stuff on, on it. See, so then it comes up really nicely. And I think you put lots of layers of sticky stuff uh, just to avoid having those scorch marks. So it actually comes up really nice. 
Yeah, see, sometimes it's, it's not perfect, sometimes it just bleeds through and there's not much you can do about it. So according to the instructions, I need this up here. Uh, inside, I need that there, that there. Okay, what's next? Okay, so the next thing is to screw these encoders in. I'm not sure which direction they need to be facing. I'm sure I'll get it wrong though. Uh, that, and then we need the standoffs for the Pi. He's actually put in enough for different versions of Pi, I think, in here. It's always important not to over screw these things uh, because you've got uh, a metal thread into timber so you really don't want to over, over tighten them they'll just end up rotating in the in the hole then we put the raspberry pi on and oh hang on I've got to make sure i get it around the right way otherwise we're getting this wrong as well pretty sure that's right so the standoffs uh, hold the raspberry pi in Guessing that goes there. That's all right. And then this goes there. Right. Got it. And then uh, it's just a matter of you chuck these on. There should be a fairly tight fit on these too. So Ross, that's probably the only concern I have with it when you. Um, cutting out the little hole for this if people are having to push down too hard it may actually damage the the, the switch on these um, rotary encoders so that's something to bear in mind I don't know how you can fix this up apart from making this hole slightly smaller there's these other two circles it's so you glue them on top like this so it hides the the metal button basically I actually need to connect it all up now according to his diagram everything all color-coded so professional this I have to say it's the most professional um, kit I've seen in a long time so one thing I've noticed is he's even chosen GPIOs to make it look really simple uh, the format is the same so getting it wrong is pretty hard and this should go into here now he says you're actually supposed to um, use the cable tie provided <laughs> but I'm not going to because I'm too keen to get this going so I just push it in there we have the audio jack as well um, and then you have the audio extendy thingy that goes around this way with its uh, corner thingy and this goes in here like this like that and then lastly, well you've got the SD card, he's already provided it for me. Chuck the music in the USB uh, card. Okay, and then you just chuck in the juice. And really for a dementia patient, what they should see is this little LED go green once it's all started up. There we go. And theoretically, I can adjust the volume with this and I can play the songs. I could actually chuck in my headphones, but unfortunately you won't be able to hear it. So, so I'm just chucking in my external uh, amplifier. And theoretically, when I change this, it'll be adjusting the volume. Which it does. The good thing about this is, and that's something I've just noticed, Often with volume controls, you can actually end up making them uh, play too loudly. And so this is one of these things that has a fixed limit. There's no indicator, so it's very simple. All you do is just turn it this way to turn the volume up. Very simple, no markers, nothing to get lost with uh, change the song that you want to play. Very simple. And once again, this is a very simple idea but it has such a massive impact um, it makes it very simple for a dementia patient to be able to play the songs they want to be able to play 
So good on you, Ross. This is an absolutely fabulous um, idea. Um, and if you want to get the kit, uh, you can go to dqmusicbox.org. Ross mentioned that my channel was actually very helpful in designing the, the music player. Thanks very much, Ross, for, for giving me uh, the props. I'm glad to help. And that's the whole idea of this channel, is to help uh, makers such as yourself um, make some really cool stuff. So, yep, yeah, I certainly will have fun with this, Ross. Um, in fact, I have uh, someone in mind. One of my friend's uh, fathers has dementia, so I'm going to give it to him, and I'll actually keep you abreast of what happens and how he goes with it. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. So if you want to see what it looks like fully uh, built, that's what it looks like. Uh, I haven't actually glued it together, um, but I shall glue it. So anyway, that's about it for this Mick Make Mail segment. Thanks for watching. See you next week.